Hey guys, this is what if the team and T Ninja Turtles were in the My Hero Academia Part 2. Now, this what if I was going to keep it on the back burner since I didn't really get a lot of views first time around, and I'm starting to realize my channel is kind of going downhill a little bit. But this summer and the rest of this month, and also the rest of the summer, or maybe next year, if I have enough time next year doing, you know, high school. I'm going to be focusing a lot of my time in YouTube and also trying to save up to get my stuff to do reaction videos. Like I said a long time ago, I was going to do reaction videos in gaming and I have the stuff I need, but I do need a Delgado 60 or something. A Delgado is something to hook up my PS5 to my system and also trying to get a laptop to do gaming on and reaction videos on because my PC kind of sucks. So I'm trying to do that and trying to save up to do what I really want to do on my channel, as in reaction videos, gaming, and stop motion. That's, main, that's mainly the real thing I really want to do the most on my channel. Because those, those are the things that bring me the most enjoyment, other than what ifs. Now, let's just dive right into this what if and stop talking about what I'm going to do with my channel. Now, last left off, the Ninja Turtles would have been given a choice to go to jail or either be a part of UA as well. Or well, new students being thrown in the second day of UA, the next day of UA. Now we would see the Ninja Turtles would have jumped in and would have stopped the whole thing happening, or would have helped with the USJ event, as this would have, you know, taken place. But after the USJ event, we would get switched to Ninja Turtles the next day, as they would have gone to class one A, or pretty much UA, talking to everybody at UA. Now we would see that everybody would have been talking everything like that, but what happened is. Well, as I would walk into class and would have talked about the sports festival. Now, it's been a long time since I've done a sports festival event in a what if. And I'm really excited to do it. Now, basically what would happen is, well, everybody would be told about pretty much, well, the sports festival and how it's a pretty good chance to get sponsorships and hero pretty much, you know, recognition to pretty much get trained by other heroes and other divisions. So, basically, what would happen is, well, Leo would have been kind of excited for it. But Raph would have been kind of on the on the fence about it, being a little bit more angrier and actually outshining Bakugo in some of the things they do in class. Now, Donnie would have been the most academic in the class, and also being great friends with Ida, as he would have talked to Ida, them strategizing on how to do the best in the sports festival, as everybody would have been given, you know, pretty much trained by Azawa, and for the past couple of days. We would see that the Ninja Turtles would have been training in the forest and the jungle and also throughout the city, pretty much being or working together, being ninjas, as they would have been fighting alongside each other, fighting and running around and basically all this other stuff. As we would see, they would be trained just like as a team, trained as a team, pushing past everybody and basically being an unstoppable team and being a force to be reckoned with. As Deku would have been asking Leo for pointers. As Leo would have explained to well, Deku his technique in martial arts, as Deku would be taught a little bit of martial arts by Leo and how to use a katana, but not the same, you know, double handed katana move Leo can pull off because Leo did able to teach him every part of his tricks because Leo has some pretty complicated tricks and skills with his arsenal that, well, pretty much Deku could not understand or Deku would understand, but it would take a way long way longer time basically him over like straight up just ditching the whole i guess full counter move entirely with the whole you know ninja, ninja turtles training thing leo would have given him so you said they would have been training mikey working on his you know acrobatic skills leo working on his his thinking and strategy skills and everybody working on all their skills entirely and also rap working on his strength and endurance and durability. Now we would get switched to, well, the day of the sports festival. Everybody would have been pit into uniform as we would see the Ninja Turtles would have been pinned into uniform as well. But Raph just taking off the top shirt part of his outfit, just wearing the pants for the sports festival gym suits. Just wearing the pants for him. As they would have been, they would have not been given their weapons. Them mainly training with their physical bodies and capabilities abilities or mm, blah blah blah. And basically, you see that Donnie and Mikey could have kept the weapons because they weren't not they weren't that lethal of weapons, and they were more or less you know styled as support items. As Donnie would have had a 
pretty much a little bit more of a, I guess, blunt force of batons. Basically, really long sticks in his, both of his hands, kind of like Daredevil batons, and also uh, was Mikey having dual type of, I guess, wooden nunchucks, unlike his still and orange nunchucks. That really hurts and breaks bones. So he just had, you know, they just had dual versions of their weapons, but they can still use them pretty practically. As we were to get switched to them for their first ever test or train, as we would see that they would have been told that they're going to do a race. As everybody would have gotten ready for the race, as Todoroki would have started off freezing everybody's feet, as Donnie would have been the first one to get up alongside Mikey, as they would have started to sprint for it, then being right behind Todoroki. As Deku would have try to get out the ice as he would have started to go past the robots without using his quirk too much as he would have been running running and running eventually seeing other quirk users like Danki and Kirishima fight against the robots as eventually the race would have continued with Donnie passing by Mikey and also Raph passing by Deku pushing him down on the floor as Raph would have been jumping to pillar to pillar during the well cannon type well, race of the um, cannon type, you know, platform of the race, as it would have been jumping back to back to back. As Leo would have been in the back, but out of nowhere, he would have been straight in the front, right behind Todoroki, and even past Todoroki, even then. As that he would have been going, you know, to pillar to pillar pretty slowly, as we would get a switch to pretty much them getting all the way up to the mine area. As Leo would have been, you know, had experience with mines, as he would have been trained with detecting bombs and other things like that alongside Mikey and also Splinter. As they would have been jumping to bomb, to bomb, to bomb, basically them jumping on the bomb and also doing a triple back, like straight up somersault backflip the second they touch the bomb, basically sending them all off as like supersonic speed, just straight up just jumping to bomb, to bomb, to bomb, and at incredible speeds. As they would have been in the front, all four of the turtles in the front. As we were seeing that, well, pretty much Todoroki would have had no choice. He didn't want to give anybody else a clear shot, but he just used his ice to ice over the bombs to get right behind the turtles. As Deku would have used the same technique he did, blowing the blowing the bombs underneath his body, pushing him forwards past the turtles, running faster and faster and faster. So the turtles were trying to keep up with him. As Deku would have still in cannon, got first place. As the turtles would have got second. Uh, third, fourth, and fifth place, as everybody else would have gotten other places. Now, for the whole, you know, capture the flag team thing, I'm gonna skip over that. It's gonna be simple. Pretty much, Deku got Deku still had his wristband or you know, his a thing on his forehead, but the Ninja Turtles were in second place, got getting the most wristbands and getting the most headbands since they did work as a team. And a very, you know, unique team at that, since it was four turtles and they worked together flawlessly. Pretty much racking up a bunch of points. After that, we would get switched to the 1v1s. Now, 1v1s would have been more of a strategy and fighting technique, as Deku knew for a fact that Ninja Turtles, or pretty much Mikey, Leo, Raphael, and Donatello had this all, you know, down for the count, since they could fight very well and Zawa and everybody else that knew the turtles knew this as well as pretty much we'll see that well Leo would have been put up first going up against Tupo arms as you would have looked at Tupo arms as this is going to be a little bit of a change up because there's more people in class when it's going to be a little bit more of a switch rooney with people fighting each other now they would have started to fight as Deku would have would have pretty much been in the stands watching very closely, muttering to himself. As he was in the Turtles or Raph going up against Shadow Quirk Guy and then uh, going up against Tokiyami. Raph going up against, uh, whatchamacallit, going up against Duga Arms, Leo going up against Danky, and Mikey going up against, whatchamacallit, the glue headed dude. The dude, the dude, the glue, glue head. Or like glue powers and he has like some sort of head on some sort of I don't know what on his head. As they would have started the match as Mikey would have won that fight pretty quickly, going up against the glue, dodging it pretty nicely, and chucking one of his pretty much nunchucks straight into the guy's forehead, knocking him out clean. As we would see that Leo would have gotten into a fighting stance, as Denki would have shot electricity at him, as Dank as Leo would have dodged at the way, throwing 
pretty much a, a stick as he would have had wooden swords in his hands basically using them as more of his weapons as he would have sorted pretty much well Denki throwing one of them inside his forehead as he would have ran straight towards Denki breaking his leg shoot, pretty much ripping and like straight up putting every ounce of his strength in one arm and chucking that other katana wooden katana straight into pretty much well let's just say his leg like straight up his thigh like a part of his thigh like straight up went crazy and straight up almost cracked that shit in two clean as he would have been on the ground crying as the fight would have give, been given to him as everybody in the stands would have realized that they were doing these fights very quickly taking down their opponents and going for all the weak spots in a human body as everybody would be really surprised and impressed of their skill and how they were trying to end the fights incredibly fast and not try to give a show or anything. Now we will see that pretty much well. We're gonna switch to Donnie. As Donnie would have gone up against Bakugo at this time. As Donnie would have been going pretty far in the fight. As we said Bakugo would have looked at Donnie. As he would have said, okay, let's go. As he would have thrown an explosion first off the bat. Donnie would have dodged it, hitting Bakugo upside the forehead. As Bakugo wouldn't pass out, he would have blown himself up in the in the sky, propelling himself forward, down, and basically plowing on that uh, plowing on Donnie. As he would have started to punch Donnie left and right, throwing explosions in his face, and Donnie not having enough you know skill to react as fast, so he just started lashing out, throwing one of his batons straight into pretty much well Bakugo's forehead, knocking Bakugo down to the ground, having his head like trail uncontrollably bleed as Bakugo would have gotten pissed throwing a crazy explosion almost shattering his forearms throwing a big crazy explosion as we would have pushed that would have pushed Donnie out of the ring make knocking him out keep him out of the ring as we were gonna switch to Mikey next round going up against Deku after Deku would have beaten the shadow court guy as he, I mean, the mind control court guy, as they would have gotten into a fight, as he would have looked at Donnie's skill, as he would have known that Donnie had a clear advantage in hand to hand combat and fighting skills with Deku, but Deku still has power, so he had to use it sparingly and also at the right time to not destroy his body. As he would have started to fight, as Deku would have started to use certain glimpses and certain peaks of his power left and right, while using shocks and blurs to use his power. As he would use air pressure techniques pretty fast, as Deku would have pushed pretty much Donnie out of the ring almost. As Donnie would have used nunchucks to pretty much clamp on the floor, since he would have had his pretty much nailed or I guess spiked nunchucks that can come out and have kind of a Sith type thing on the bottom of them. So what would have been as well. He would have started to fight as he would have started to fight hand to hand combat as Deku was losing badly since Deku didn't have the same hand to hand combat and fighting skill as any of the Ninja Turtles. As he would have started to get obliterated as Bakugo would have seen this from afar, being kind of impressed by the Ninja Turtles' skill, but knowing that Donnie was probably the weakest link in the team. But seeing that well, Mikey was the fastest moving Ninja Turtle, and he was moving fast AF, but also he was pretty much messing up his style by talking too much. As pretty much what would happen as well, he would have started to get uh, overtired and tuckered out since he was talking while moving at incredible speeds in hand to hand combat. As Deku would have seen this opportunity, throwing every ounce of his strength in one punch, dead ass in Mikey's throat, knocking Mikey dead out the ring, making him choke. And the medical team had to come up, basically saving Mikey's life. As Mikey would have been okay. But him being badly, straight up, just knocked the... Not, like, literally, he, he knocked the absolute air, the absolute wind out of Mikey's windpipes. Like, straight up, knocked them dead. As pretty much we would see that, Deku would have gotten a pretty clean shot, winning the fight. As we would get switched to Deku going up against well, Bakugo. As before this happened, we would get switched to Deku going up against Bakugo, but before that, we would see Todoroki going up against, well, Leonardo. As Leonardo would have gone to a fighting stance, as he would have rushed straight towards, well, pretty much, uh, Todoroki. As he would have known Todoroki's skill, as he was only using his fire side, as Todoroki, 
uh, or Don Mikey would have been, oh, Leo would have been told by Donnie that, well, Taroki's father is in Endeavor. But it seems like he's not using his fire powers and only his ice side. As we will see that Deku or seeing this from afar, knowing that or knowing somehow that Leo knew this well flaw in Todoroki's skill and abilities. As we get that we get switched to pretty much well well Donnie or Leo going or Leo going full force trying to over and take out the fight as fast as possible since Todoroki wouldn't have enough time to activate his power too fast as Deku, as Leo wanted to get close as possible. As Leo would have started to rush straight towards him, pretty much using his wooded katana to pretty much jump to jump to ice pillar to ice pillar, chucking one of them at Todoroki's fire side, knocking Todoroki down to the count, pretty much hitting him side, hitting him upside the forehead since he wouldn't have any type of protection or be able to use his ice side on his left side. No, on his right side, I think. Yeah, right side. But basically, Todoroki would have realized that Leo knew this flaw in his ability, as he would try to keep his far side away from arm's reach, but Todoroki, but Todoroki being told, nah, nah, Leo did not let that slide. Leo started to barrage Prima Todoroki with incredible hammy, hammies and straight up combos, unbelievable hand to hand style. I mean, straight up knocking the absolute win out of this man's windpipes. I mean, knocking the absolute snot out of him, bro. I mean, straight up slap boxing the shit out of him. I mean, like, straight up his soul of his body halfway through that fight, bro. He passed out, then not. No, no, no. Leo yoinked him back into reality, bro. Like, he was getting his ass whooped. Whooped, bro. He was getting his ass handed to him expeditiously. I mean, god damn. Man was doing him worse than Shredder. I mean, sheesh. Bro, to like, at this point, he already lost the fight, but no one really see because the ice was covering them. So, like, he was a bloody mess. Leo was beating the absolute crap out of him. As he wasn't going as hard as Raph does in his, you know, in their combat training and other things like that. But he was going for a pressure point to knock out Todoroki. But Todoroki wouldn't let that slide, so he used his fire side, basically making a huge fire ice tornado, pushing Mike, pushing Leo out of the ring, knocking him out cold. As we would see that Todoroki would have passed out after that, but him still being the one left standing after Leo would have been already out of the ring, so he would have won that one. Now we're going to switch to Bakugo up against Raphael. As Raphael and Bakugo would have started to get into a fight, as they would have started their fight, as they would have rushed right towards each other. As they would have started to fight each other, Raph throwing multiple hits and heavyweights, as Raph would have been boxing the absolute crap out of Bakugo. As he would have been dodging and weaving and basically going into a boxing type of arm or hand-to-hand -hand fight style, mixing it with ninjutsu and karate. As he would have been boxing the absolute crap out of Bakugo. Straight up slap boxing him, fighting him, kickboxing him, all his other things. As he would eventually go for a finishing uppercut, but Bakugo would have dodged it, throwing an explosion right towards well, Raphael's chest. As Raphael would have been pushed back, as he would have looked down, him saying, my shell's a little bit more durable than that, buddy. As he would have ran straight back at pretty much, well, he would have ran straight back at, uh, uh, <laughs> he, would have, he, would have, he would have ran straight back towards, well, Bakugo. As Bakugo would have tried to get away from him, throwing himself forward and up into the sky with explosions trying to get as far away as possible but well let's just say Raphael got some hop so he got straight on Bakugo's ass like all the way up on his booty cheeks I mean goddamn bro man was practically taking his cheeks I mean he was all up on him and he was beating the absolute crud out of him I mean slap boxing the shit out of him I mean like straight up boxing him like he was doing him worse than Raph, than Leo did Todoroki. Like, he was beating the snot out of him. Literally, it was snot and blood coming out of Bakugo's nose. As Bakugo was just about to lose this fight, as Leo was about, as Leo saw this from afar, as he knew for a fact, Raph was gonna kill him. Raph was going a little bit too overboard as he was beating the absolute shit out of Bakugo. As Bakugo was on the floor, bleedy, bloody, and just bleedy, bloody, whatever, bloody and messed up. As Bakugo would have used the final shock of blast, as 
Raphael would have known this technique since he was cornered and he was going to use every ounce of his power in one blast as ball box. Raphael tried to get out of the way as fast as possible, but it was too late as he would have been pushed out of the ring and would have been hit with half of the explosion just enough so he would have been pushed out of the ring and would have been disqualified. As everybody would have been shocked at the Ninja Turtles skill, their practicality and how fast they moved and how much and how far they got into the 1v1s. As a lot of, you know, hero agencies would have wanted it at this point, but some of the hero agencies thinking they were too violent or too ninja-like and too fast for, you know, hero business as they wanted to see, they wanted heroes to give off shows, to do sponsorships and also get the agencies more credit and stuff like that. But other agencies that just wanted to get the job done really, really liked his, really liked their, you know, skill and dedication. As we get switched, to pretty much, I think, Mikey. Now, I think Mikey, Donnie, Leo, and Raph would have been disqualified by this point. So, we would see that Bakugo and Deku would have gotten into the ring. As Bakugo would have been kind of injured from the last couple fights. And Deku as well. As his fight with Leo. Uh, not Leo, but his fight with D Mikey was pretty, was pretty, you know, rough. As he would have gotten into a fight stand as... He would have tried to mimic some of the skills Mikey was throwing, as he would have been able to mimic one of the ninja type, I guess, back punch, as he would have done a, well, kick flip behind Bakugo using a little bit of his power in his legs, in one part, in, but only in like one part of his body, almost shattering his leg, as he would have sprained his ankle pretty badly, as he would have stumbled behind Bakugo and doing a an incredible tiger punch right on Bakugo's spinal cord. Uh, hitting, hitting Bakugo dead on his back, or dead on his chest, uh, Bakugo would have been on the ground coughing up blood, as he would have thrown an explosion towards Bakugo, I mean towards Deku, as he would have dodged incredibly fast, as Deku and pretty much, well, Bakugo would have been fighting and fighting, as eventually Bakugo would have lost the fight, as he would have been too injured, and his explosions were kind of weakened, as Deku would use one bit of his power in his right arm to pretty much elbow the shit out of Bakugo. The next ring, it was Todoroki and Deku. As the fight would have happened exactly the same, them doing a full-on counter, like, incredible move, as Todoroki would have still been the victor in this fight. As Todoroki would have been first place, Bakugo being second place, and Deku being third place. Now, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys like, subscribe, and before this, we see the here, we see the villains would have been watching from afar, them being kind of interested in the Ninja Turtles now, and what they can bring to the table if they were ever able to bring them on their side. Seeing that Raphael was a lot more of a brutaler, more not really caring whoever, not really caring whoever or whatever or who thinks of him at all, as it would have had more or less more of a intention to capture Raphael and Bakugo. As some of the agencies wouldn't want Raphael, I was supposed to say this earlier because they thought he was too violent, too much like a villain in terms of his fighting skills and his personality, as he was way too much violent and way too much, I guess, angry at the world and how he treat people outside the ring. Since some people saw that as Raphael was a really big winner, as he would have made fun of people's quirks, their bodies, and some other people, and some people he even made fun of their parents since he knew a little bit of their backstory. Making fun of one hero or one student because his father has cancer. I mean, like, Raphael in this story, at this point in the story, he's gonna get character development, but Raphael in this point of the story is kind of a douchebag. Now, we would have seen that, well, pretty much the villains would have wanted both of Bakugo and Raphael. And some agencies didn't want about didn't want Raphael since he was a little bit of a let's just say very mean. So I'm gonna leave it up here, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, you guys like and subscribe. And as always, guys, have a blessed day. Deuces.